And so Chris, Chris can prove to his boss that he was actually here. I actually do a little bit of work. Uh, but, but guys, Chris Jensen is a former what? Uh, Marine. Ah, uh, see, I got you. No, there's no former Marines. Exactly. There's only Marines. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I've known Chris for several years and he uh, started working for these guys a while back. And, and I was like, seriously, I was like, another fire stick company, right? And, uh, but I went and, and they gave me their spiel. I showed you the, the keychain impressed me right off the bat. Um, but uh, they gave me their spiel and they make some really nice stuff. And so something I want to say to you guys is a lot of us have these jackets with these zipper pockets on them. And if you've got one of those on, feel it. If there's nothing in the pockets, why? Like, I mean, before this class, there should have been at least a big lighter in there. After this class, there should be one of his little fire steels in there. So that's just, you know, we got all these pockets for stuff and we never put stuff in them. So that, you know, that's my, that's my thing. But uh, Chris, please. All right. Uh, for those who do not know me, I'm Chris Jensen. I do sales and marketing at uh, Exotac. Exotac, we're based in Winder, Georgia. So right between Atlanta and Athens. Atlanta. <laughs> Good old Atlanta. So uh, we manufacture US made fire starters, some outdoor and survival gear, e uh, EDC gear like the keychain uh, James was showing you earlier. We manufacture all that in the US. We manufacture all down in Winder, Georgia. So everything we do is US manufactured. Uh, by U.S. employees, and um, that's pretty much it. So, go start off with what we're here to talk about is fire. Fire being one of the priority or, uh, priorities of survival. It's being an extremely important priority of survival. You look at your priorities of survival, you got self-aid, shelter, fire, um, water, signaling, navigation, and then food. So, out of a couple of those things, if you do not have fire, you cannot, make, you cannot purify water, correct? You cannot cook your food if it's during the winter time or as it was a little bit colder last night. If you don't have fire, you're not going to survive the night if you don't have a proper shelter. So fire is extremely important. It's something that we need to have with us at all times, especially if we're in the outdoors. Uh, and what we do at Exotech, we make it a little bit easier for you to carry those fire making uh, implements with you at all times. Uh, now moving into the triangle fire, what you need to have a sustainable fire. First thing you need is Tender, then you need um, fuel, uh, excuse me, first you need fuel, then you need heat, then you need air. So inside of the fuel you have your tender, you have your kindling, and then you have your, your actual fuel, uh, fuel. Tender being extremely combustible, extremely fibrous material. If it's going to be a natural material, you want it to be fibrous, you want it to be easily combustible. If it's not, uh, say, a natural tender, you can have your homemade stuff and you can have your commercial uh, stuff that we'll talk about a little bit later. But the main thing you want it to be is fibrous, you want it to be dry, you want it to be extremely combustible. Now you have your kindling. Your kindling is something that will be, once again, it's going to be extremely combustible. It needs to be dry, so when you're gathering your kindling, if you don't hear, if you don't hear that snap, that means it's not dry, it's wet, it's not going to catch fire as easily as it will if it's dry. So you want to hit, have your dry kindling it needs to be toothpick size up to pencil size, number two pencil size. Anything more than that, you might have trouble from your tinder bundle or your bird's nest or your tinder, it might have trouble catching. And then you have your fuel. Your, fu your fuel will be your bigger pieces of, of material. It can be anywhere from thumb size up to two to four inches in diameter. And that is going to catch from your sustainable, um, your kindling getting going so it needs to be as dry as possible but if it's not as, if it's not extremely dry your can you, if you have a large amount of kindling that's going to be what dries out your fuel then you have your heat heat comes your heat source comes from either lighter ferro rod uh, matches striker flint steel magnifying glass friction fire you have all that for your um, your heat element and then you have your oxygen just air so everybody knows that if you don't have one of those three things you're, you're not gonna have a fire correct you need those three things to have a sustainable fire air would just be once again just basic air now when a lot of people build their fires they build their fires and they don't leave enough room to allow airflow into their fires or that updraft into their fires so if you're doing that you're not allowing airflow into your fire you're not gonna have uh, your fire actually ignite and uh, be sustainable now moving into 
different types of <coughs> heating sources or different methods to actually start a fire. First thing you got, which I would suggest as your primary and your emergency uh, method to start a fire, will be a standard lighter, whether it's a standard Bic lighter or where it's something like this or a Titan light, which is a refillable lighter that uses standard Zippo fuel. So the reason why I say this is my first go-to for an emergency fire because it's open flame. I don't want to sit there and have to worry about any other method to get my fire started if I have an open flame, open flame resource. This way, now I can use this resource for my emergency fire or my first fire, and then when it comes to my next fire or something after that, I can go to say a ferro rod or a, 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 a sparking device or flint and steel or magnifying glass or anything like that because it'll be a lot easier to get that next fire. The last thing I want to do if I'm, you know, if I'm shivering hyperthermic and going hyperthermic is to try and get, you know, a fire started by either using a friction fire or a flint and steel or anything like that. So your emergency method to start a fire should always be a actual lighter. And um, you got we got pros and cons to them. Depends on the different types of lighters you have. Is it a standard Bic lighter? As you can see right now, a little gust of wind, it can blow it out. So you just have to maintain it by covering up or so on and so forth. So that's one of the downsides to a standard Bic lighter. Upsides to them is they cost a dollar, two dollars. You can find them anywhere. You can toss them anywhere in your kit. Um, now, while they're not entirely waterproof, they are easy to get going if you dunk them into water. All you got to do is uh, shake them out, dry off the sparking wheel, and go from there. Uh, what we manufacture is what we call our fire sleeve. And what this is, is a waterproof uh, covering for your big lighter. It's waterproof, it has a lanyard loop on the top and the bottom, but also it'll float in water if you drop it. So this just makes a, a, a good solid big lighter just a little bit better. That way, you know, you can have this, you, dunk, you take a dunk in water, you can get up and your lighter's still good to go. Then you have something like this Titan light, which is a refillable lighter, takes standard Zippo fuel, and it has, because it has a flame guard on it, it makes it a little bit more resistant to, you know, wind or anything like that, so it'll last a little bit longer. Um, I want to say something about that real quick, if, I don't mind, if you don't mind, Chris. Go ahead. So, um, I've recently, you know, I've traveled around the world, and like, you know, when you fly, that you're not allowed to have a lighter on the plane. Well, they pressurize the cargo holds on, in America, so you can have your Bic lighter in there, fly somewhere else in the States, and it works fine. In Africa, you're allowed to carry one lighter on the plane because the cargo hold is not pressurized. Um, but, what I, but, but, what I was, but I took one of those to Africa with me. I knew this in advance, so I, so I left it in my pack so I would have a lighter that worked uh, when I got there because it wasn't depending on butane working. And so I know that's a very specific thing, <coughs> But that's one way that I used that lighter that he just showed because of the pressurization. I never would have thought about that in advance unless I was warned about it. So, no. I have a question about it as well. Go ahead. How, how does uh, the evaporation of the fuel, is it, does it stay in there? Is it? Okay, so outstanding question. So his question was evaporation of fuel on our Titan light. So what we did with this was we installed O-rings on both the fuel cap and the main cap. That way you don't have to worry about that evaporation effect like you do with the standard Zippo. You don't have to worry about it leaking out into your pocket. Um, so, and also it, make, it uh, makes it waterproof as well. So that's, a, that's one of the pluses about having this Titan light is it allows it to be waterproof. It allows it to not evaporate. It allows it to not leak. I've had one sitting on my desk with fluid in it for about almost a year now. And it's still sitting on my desk. If I light it, it's, it's still going on. Fuel wise, how uh, does it? Compared to the big uh, lengthwise, like the amount of uh, burn you get out of it, or it all, it's all depend on how long you burn it for. Uh, when you're filling this up, it takes about two milliliters of fuel. So, looking at two milliliters would be, if you fill this bottom cap up twice, that's about that's approximately two milliliters. All right. uh, and that's a, that's good enough to get it going. After that, if you ever need to refill, it, just put a little bit, uh, put a, like one cap full in, and call it a day. Uh, uh, for staying lit. If you're if you're lighting your if you're lighting your mat, uh, your lighter for more than five seconds, you're doing something wrong. So especially in a survival situation, because it's a it's a resource that you want to try and maintain as as long as possible. So if you're using it for a long time, you're doing something wrong. So if you're using it for more than five seconds, 
either your tinder bundle is not dried out or fluffed up enough, either you don't have the right tinder materials you're working with, or either you're trying to light a full-fledged stick and you're just doing something wrong. After that, um, you have ferro rods. Ferro rods being a big thing, uh, and of course inside the bushcraft community, everybody loves ferro rods because they think, you know, that's what they use, right? Everybody has a ferro rod on, they're like, oh, the bigger the better, and they use it to start their fire every time. Ferro rods are great because they work in all, pretty much all environments. They work when they're cold, they work when they're wet, they work in pretty much any environment, and they're relatively simple to use. All you need is a sharp surface, a sharp 90 degree surface, and you're good. So what we manufacture is we manufacture something called the fire rod, which is a little ferro rod which has a, a waterproof tinder capsule on it, and you stuff it on your belt, uh, your belt knife, or it works in conjunction with a belt knife or some type of hard edge, uh, hard 90 degree edge, kind of like this uh, SE fire, uh, fire steel. And also, what if you ever run out of it? We have the ferro rod threaded so you can just unscrew the ferro rod and then replace it. So, best part about this is, it's easy to use, you can toss it on your knife and that, that way if you have your belt knife on you, you will always have your knife, a ferro rod, and a piece of tinder on you at all times. So, in case everything else in your life went to hell, you at least have those three things to hopefully get you through the night. Um, we also make something a little bit more um, as a more inexpensive model, which is our Poly Striker and our Poly Striker XL. This we have the striker actually built into the handle. And then when you're done with it, it just clicks right back in place. So it makes it a nice little streamlined um, component. You can toss it in your pocket, you can toss it in your fire kit. It, it's not big, it's not bulky, and it's not two pieces. So it just it's not like two separate pieces, so it just makes everything a little bit. pocket on the sleeve of your jacket. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. Exactly. And then, the one that James was talking about earlier is our Nano Striker XL. So this is something I consider as that emergency ferro rod that, uh, that I keep in my keychain at all times. It is definitely smaller than your standard ferro rod, but it is a ferro rod and striker unit in one, uh, in one piece, so I take my cap off, I screw it onto the bottom, and then I have my striker. So it's something that I can keep on my keychain at all times. Your that way, it'll be all right. <laughs> it'll buff out. <laughs> so now I have something that if I toss, say, a fire sleeve or a tight light in my pocket, and I toss one of these in my keychain, this weighs maybe maybe 10 ounces tops if that and i have two methods to start a fire on me at all times it's something easy to do it's easy to carry and it's something that could possibly save my life one day after that you're looking at moving into your matches so i would always suggest stormproof matches by yuko and we make uh, our match cap that fits stormproof matches directly of course everything we do is o-ring sealed so it's waterproof we keep our striker strip, uh, striker strip on the inside. That way, if you are using it, if you t if it takes, if you take a dunk or it takes a dunk, your striker strip doesn't get wet. Because if you don't have a striker strip for Yuko matches, you can't use the match. So it just makes that a little bit easier for you. But also, once again, we do we put a lot of different uh, things in into what we do. So it has a lanyard loop on it. It has some knurling on here to give you a good grip. And then also has an extra striking pad on the bottom in case you need, uh, in case you're using strike anywhere matches. So this is just a grip texture, like uh, pretty much like skater tape uh, grip texture. And then you can use your strike anywhere match on that. Or if you needed to, on the knurling, the knurling is uh, rough enough to where you can actually use your strike anywhere match on, off the knurling. So it just gives you a couple extra options. Downside to matches, what would be the downside to matches? It's one and done, right? Use one match and then you're you're down one match. So when I'm carrying when I'm carrying fire making gear out in my actual kit, I would like to carry two forms of open uh, two forms of open flame. I'll usually carry a lighter and I'll usually carry matches. The reason why I'll carry these stormproof matches is because they work when they're wet, they work when it's windy. Um, you can light them, dunk them in water, and pull them back up. They'll light right back up. 
if it's really windy outside, my lighter may not work or it you know may not stay lit long enough for me to actually catch my uh, my tinder bundle or any of my tinder on fire. These will. These will last for a long time. I think a standard Yuko, uh, Yuko match lasts from like 12 to 15 seconds. So it gives you more than enough time to get your tinder bundle, uh, tinder bundle lit. So it's just another option to carry with you. And then once again, you look at, say I'm carrying these three items to start a fire. It fits in, my, fits in the palm of my hand. Doesn't take up too much room in my kit, right? I can toss all these three things. Now I have three ways to start a fire, two, two of them being open flame method. After that, we have something else, We uh, kind of like a sparking device. So how many people know of the old school military spark lights? <clears throat> you see them in aviation kits? Okay, so we got like one, maybe two out here. So all the spark light was, was a one-handed fire starter. It came in the aviation kits. And that's, that's all it is, just a one-handed sparking device. So what we did was we made it, uh, we modernized it a little bit and made it where if you unscrew it, you have your piece of tinder on the inside of there. So, kind of like our fire rod, something like this, I now have a one-handing fire starter and a piece of tinder that weighs five, six ounces tops. And I can stuff this on, I can toss this on my keychain, stuff in my pocket, it's something lightweight, I can use it left-handed, I can use it right-handed, I don't have to worry about it. Um, and I've tried this out with a lot of this um, commercial tinder as well as some natural tinder, it'll light a lot of things. Um, so even though it is a sparking, even though it is a sparking device, it is, it is still lightweight, lightweight enough that way you can toss in your pocket and go out the door and you don't have to worry about having a fire start on you. Does that one have a lanyard on the end of it or something? Where it, you it has a lanyard loop on it. Oh, I see that now. So you can stuff it on, you can put it on your key ring, you can attach it to, you can put it on a lanyard, toss it around your neck, whatever you want to do like that. Mm -hmm. Now moving into a little bit more primitive fire starting methods. Even though we don't make anything for primitive fire starting, I like to. I just want to cover it. That way, it gives you, you know, once again, pros and cons of everything. <clears throat> First thing you got is uh, flint and steel. So you have a steel striker and you have a piece of flint. Now it can be a piece of flint, it can be a piece of chert, it can be a piece of iron pyrite, it can be a piece of quartzite. Whatever, whatever is harder than the steel. Because when you actually use this, what you're doing is you're actually shaving little pieces of metal off of carbon steel. You're actually shaving little pieces of it off, and it's actually when it uh, ignite, when it hits the uh, air, it ignites. So this works extremely well with um, char cloth or char material, char punk wood, something like that. It works extremely well. Downside to it being. Your char cloth, of course, needs to be dry. If you get your char cloth wet, it's not going to work. Your tinder bundle needs to be as dry as possible. Yes, it can ignite a um, a little uh, a wet more, uh, tinder bundle, but it's going to be a lot harder and a little bit more difficult to do that. And it's not going to ignite anything more on, on lines of like your uh, commercial style tenders or even some of your stuff you can find at home. It's not going. It's not going to be hard enough to ignite that. So that would be the downside to that. Now this uh, this one I got right here is the SE Fire Steel. Good thing about this is because it has a nine degree edge on it, it allows me to throw sparks off my ferro rod. So if I wanted to, I can carry you know if I wanted to be a little bit more uh, when I go out there, I want to be a little bit more traditional. I can carry a ferro rod and I can carry this, which offers me a striker for my ferro rod, but also I can use a flint and steel method. And because it has the bow drill divot in there, I can go. Full, uh, you know, a bow drill fire if I wanted to. So, once again, something a little bit, something small, compact you can keep in your pocket. After that, you will have solar ignition using magnif uh, using a magnification glass, or if you wanted to, you can use some type of reflector like um, um, the reflector out of your flashlight or something like that. So you got magnify uh, magnifying glass. Good thing about this is the sun, renewable resource, right? As long as it's out, you go have. As long as you're out, you can use it. What's the downside to this? <laughs> if, if, the sun, if the sun's not out, you can't use it. Now, this works extremely well with once again charred material, charred punk wood, or it can even work with some natural material. As long as you compress the natural material into a little ball, into a nice tight ball, and 
just direct the rays of the sun onto it. And then go from there. So what you want to do is you want to have it level with the sun. So when you have it out there, you want to have a nice little thing and then uh, where I can where can I see it? Okay. And then you want to focus it into as tight of a point as possible. And leave it there for about 20, 30 seconds. Hopefully it'll start going. If it doesn't, most likely the tinder material you have is not uh, is not uh, processed correctly, especially if you're using natural tinder. If you're using something like char cloth or char punk wood, it'll most likely go up. It'll most likely create an ember within 20 or 30 seconds. And then one of the last things we got we can talk about will be friction fire. So friction fire for me personally, I I feel that friction uh, friction fire it is a useful skill to know. It is something that you should uh, you should know, you should practice, and you should earn that skill. But for an emergency scenario, I would never use a friction fire. If it comes down into an emergency scenario and I'm using a friction fire, I've done something extremely wrong with my life up to that point. Because I can tell you right now, on my body, I have a ferro rod on my keychain, I got a lighter in my pocket, I got a Fresnel lens in my, in my wallet, and I got, you know, some matches in my belt. So if I, if I ever have to use a friction fire, I've done something extremely wrong. So is it a good skill to know? Yes. Should you know it? Yes. Should you practice it? Yes. Is it something I would trust for an emergency fire? No. I'm going to go with my surefire, either a lighter or some stormproof matches or even a ferro rod. I'm going to go something I know for sure will give me flame or give me a spark. All right, now moving into tenders, different types of tenders. So you have everything from your natural tender. Your natural tender, one of them being extremely fine fibrous material. You can get this from tulip popper bark. You can get it from cedar bark. Um, you can get it from a lot of things, uh, strangly vine. You can get all that. Do I need to know what every tree in the wood in the woods is to find a good tender material? No, what do I need to know? I need to know the properties, right? I need to know, hey, can I, can I pull this off? Can I tear it up? So when I sit there and I pull it off, I, if I pull it off, it pulls off in little strips or sheets like this. When I start to process it, can I process it? Is it dry? Is it fibrous? That's what I need to know when I come into processing it. So if I can, if I can do that, it'll work as a good tender material for a bird's nest or a tender bundle. If I cannot do that, it most likely will not work. Then you have something um, that, of course, everybody is familiar with, fatwood, right? Whether you call it fatwood, pitchwood, lighter knot, tin, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you call it in the particular uh, part of the US you are. So fatwood. All fatwood is is resin-laded, um, you know, resin-laded piece of wood from a pine tree or uh, from a pine tree. So from a dead pine, if you find a dead pine that uh, fell over or something like that, look at the stump. Start ripping some of that wood up. If you see kind of like a yellow orangish color to it and it has a real sm uh, strong pine smell, a turpentine smell, it's most likely fatwood. Also, you can pull fatwood from live standing trees if you look at where the branches are. Look at the crotch area of the branch. Sit there, cut it off right at the crotch, and then just process it down until you get to that material you need. Now we'll talk about processing this stuff in a little bit because there's a different ways to process every type of, every type of uh, tinder. After that, you got um, some birch bark. I believe this is river birch bark and we have some river birch around here. Uh, I believe I saw some river birch sitting around here. So uh, river birch has some oil, has natural oils in it that are extremely flammable. Now, you could process it one or two ways. You can sit there and process it by just scraping on it with your knife and then lighten it, ignite it that way, or you can add it as more of a more of like an accelerant to your tender bundle or bird's nest by just crumbling up and placing it inside just under your bird's nest. So those would be some of the main natural tenders you'll like to, you'll like to look for. Also, you can look for um, pine pitch or pine sap. If you find a, a wound on a pine tree where that sap has started to leak down and dry it up, just rip some of that off, it's gonna be extremely sticky. That is a, is a great accelerant. It works really well and it burns, very, it burns for a very long time. Now, moving into processing some of this natural material. Like I was talking about earlier, 
with your outer and inner barks. So I ripped that off, I have this. All I'm gonna do to process it, I'm just gonna start ripping apart. And I would like to do this somewhere over, say over my emergency blank or something like that. That way I can catch everything that falls down. So I'm just ripping it apart. And just keep processing it until you have enough of these fine fibers showing. Then just roll around and then continue doing that. So this stuff should be dry enough to where at this point in time, it will take a spark from a ferro rod, hopefully. If it, if it does not take a spark from a ferro rod, you need to process some more. You can, don't think you're over processing this. Process it until you, until it, you know, ignites relatively easily. Oh, almost caught. There it is. So you got that, it's going. And what I would do, I would take this, I would put it into my fire lay, I would turn it over. That way heat rises, the fire will rise, and it'll burn longer. And that'll burn for, you know, a couple, maybe another minute or so. And that's just a small thing. If you're going to actually do a tinder bundle, I would like to go with like a softball size tinder bundle of natural material. And what you can do with that is you can actually add some fatwood shavings or flat, uh, fatwood splinters into that to make it a little bit longer, uh, longer burning and also make it burn hotter. That way if you have marginal kindling, it'll burn longer, burn hotter. That way it hopefully catch that marginal kindling. Now, going, going into processing fatwood. You can process it one or two ways. Well, you can process, process it several ways, but easiest ways either to make shavings You can make shavings or even make a feather stick if it'll actually stay. Now, what's the downside to actually making shavings? Burn quicker? No. What am I doing with my knife? Yeah, I'm, I'm wasting the edge on my knife, right? That I can, I can be using this edge for something else. So, depending on the knife you have, whether you have, say, if you have like an SE6 or SE4, they have a coated blade. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna be wasting blade. If you have something with a non-coated blade and a 90 degree spine, I can sit there and work this like a spoke shave. And this is a lot easier. I'm making, I'm making shavings faster and they have more surface area and they have more fibers, that way they'll pick up a spark faster. And I am not wasting a resource, i.e my knife blade. If you get a little hung up right there, yeah, just pop it off and then continue going. So, that way I didn't waste the resource of my blade and I got a nice little pile of shavings here that I could ignite with a ferro rod or with a lighter or anything like that. So, let's see if this will go ahead and ignite. Yep, there it is. Everybody see that? <laughs> so once again, processing fatwood. You can do it, I, I would suggest one or two ways. You can either use your blade to create some uh, larger shavings or use the spine of your knife if you have a sharpened spine on your knife to just use it like a spoke shave and create those finer shavings. That way it catches a little bit easier. All right, so and of course, with the fatwood, we also sell fatwood. We sell them in um, our tinder tins. We sell them in either shavings or splinter forms. So shavings would be kind of like what I did with the spoke shaving method. Splinter forms is pretty much like you took, we took the fatwood and just broke it up. Plus side to this is now I have an, if once I run out of the fatwood, I have a tin that I can use to make charcoal off with. All right, so that'll, uh, that's pretty much covered for, say, more of our natural tenders. Now moving at stuff you can either have homemade or that you are either you can make it home in your house or you already have it at your house. So, number one go-to, Vaseline cotton balls. How many people know about Vaseline cotton balls, right? 
Hopefully everybody can raise their hand on that one. Vaseline combos, extremely simple to make and extremely cheap. You can go buy a thing of vas a big tub of Vaseline at Walmart for a dollar or two, buy a bag of uh, cotton balls at Walmart for about, uh, for about a buck. So two, three, four dollars tops, you can make a hundred Vaseline cotton ball uh, little tenders. Make sure they're cotton. Yes, it has to be 100% cotton. Now, downside to this. What's the downside? Messy. It'll, it is a little bit messy, but are they waterproof? No, it's not. It's not 100% waterproof, right? So you will have to keep it in a Ziploc bag. Now, if it's out, if you're trying to light a fire in inclement weather or adverse conditions, and it's raining outside, you might have an issue with this. Maybe, maybe not. It all depends. What you can do to help remedy that is create what what they call fire nuggets. And all fire nugget is is taking the Vaseline and cotton ball and then wrapping it in a little piece of aluminum foil. That way, it makes it a little bit more waterproof. Also, it allows it to burn a little bit longer. All you gotta do to ignite this, just cut a little X in there, pull some, uh, pull some cotton out, ignite it. So, just another little way, that way, it's, it's most likely something you already have at your house. Just, you take, you take that and it makes it a little bit more waterproof. Then, another, uh, another thing, dryer lint. If you have a dryer, you have dryer lint. You can pick this up, stuff it in a bag, and there you go, you have fire tender. Downside to it is, it's not waterproof, right? So yes, it, it's pretty much free, but it's not waterproof, so you have, you'll have to keep it in a Ziploc bag, and it doesn't burn as long as, say, your other, your, you know, your Vaseline cotton balls or your, uh, your fire nuggets. <clears throat> uh, extremely fine steel wool. This stuff will burn. Uh, you, can, you can light it with a ferro rod, uh, you can light it with a 9 volt battery if you wanted to. Downside to it, it doesn't really catch a flame, it more smolders than anything. So, if you have a tinder bundle and you have this, use some of this, uh, ignite it with your ferro rod or battery, plus in your tinder bundle and you're good to go. Jute twine, once again you might have this, or you might th have this at your house. Just pull it off a section, cut it off and then you go pretty much process the same way you will process natural material by, by <coughs> spreading out, fluffing up, and exposing those fine fibers. Another thing that people don't know, alcohol prep pads, something that's in your first aid kit. These things will catch, these things will catch a spark. They'll burn, they don't burn for an extremely long period of time, but they will burn. Uh, so it could be something you just have in your medicine cabinet you need as an emergency item, you can, you can light that. Or even um, tropiambiotic ointment, Rub that on a uh, a cotton pad or something like, or a piece of cotton that will light. And then something you can make either at your house, or you can make it on the trail, whatever. Uh, char cloth. So char cloth has to be 100%. It has to be natural material. So 100% cotton material works well, or linen works extremely uh, works well. All all you're doing to make char cloth, you cut up your cotton material or put in a little charring tin. Charring tin, if ha put a little small hole in it. It can be a small hole, it can be a large hole, it doesn't really matter. And then toss into a fire. You will see smoke start to evaporate, uh, start to escape from the hole. All that is is the oxygen escaping from the material. Once you no, no longer see smoke, that means your material is charred. You cannot overchar material. If you toss it in the fire and you leave it there for you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, you pull out a fire, it's still, it's still gonna be charred. So you cannot overchar material, but you can underchar material. What what do you do if you underchar material? Right Toss it right back in the fire, right? So what you would do with this is you put your char you put your material you go char in here, whether it's uh, your cotton material, linen, or you can use something like um, punk wood. Everybody knows what punk wood is, right? Uh, dead uh, dead branches on you know laying on the ground, piece of dead wood laying on the ground. They're real brittle, real easy to break apart. They work great for a char, for a char material. Uh, you can use that, you can use cattails. If you have a tr uh, charring tin large enough, you can use cattails uh, for a char material. So you place it in there, put your cap on, you toss it in the fire, you wait till, it, uh, uh, you, wait till you, no, you no longer see smoke. You remove it from your fire, but you do not touch it, you do not open it until it is cool to the touch. If you open it before then, all you go do is 
oxygen's gonna come back in there and it's gonna ignite the charcoal off and you go uh, ruin your charcoal off. So charcoal off, pretty simple to make. If we have a fire out here tonight, I got some charring tins, we can cut up some material, toss it in the fire and call it a day. After that, duct tape. Regular duct tape is actually, uh, it works uh, as a great fire extender. And if you actually process it down enough, you can actually ignite duct tape with a ferro rod. So once again, it's all about processing your, processing your material down. So duct tape, you'll see a lot of people, a lot of bushcrafters, they'll take these larger ferro rods and they'll put some duct tape on the end of it. One is to use it as a handle, that way when you're striking it doesn't fly out of your hand, but also I can use this as a flame extender or a fire extender. So if I ignite this, it's going to burn, it might burn longer and hotter than some natural tinder. So just a little, just a little uh, tip and trick. And then going into like the last thing for um, nat uh, from stuff you might find around your house, Brasso. How many people have ever used Brasso in their life? <laughs> if, if, you're, if you've been in the Marines, you, you definitely Brasso the skull up <laughs> once or twice, right? Okay. So, yeah, sure. when you're looking at Brasso, look for the stuff at the, uh, like the, cotton, the cotton stuff or the, pad, the batting. This stuff ignites extremely well. So, take a little bit of it, toss it down. You'll understand what he means. So, you really, you know, just fluff it up a little bit. Oh, come on. There it is. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I had to actually get the spark on there, but yeah. It'll take a normal spark. And it'll, it'll burn for a very long time, it'll burn extremely hot. But Think about it. if I carry one of these out into the field with me, how much how much do you think how many fires do you think I gotta start with this this? I can go to Walmart and get one of these for two, three, four bucks. What what is it? It's a brasso that's with cotton or Yeah, it's a wadding. Wadding. So, and then if I do run out of this, what else can I use this for? Charring tin, right? Yeah. Hmm. So now I have multiple purposes here. I can have a, uh, I can have a fire starter, but when I'm, uh, when I'm done with this, pop a hole in it and use it as a charring tin. Yes. Yeah, and that, that can, it seems like it would keep it at least a little waterproof. You know? <laughs> yeah, the, the can will be relatively waterproof. If you want to keep it a little bit more waterproof, take some, take some duct tape, take some electrical tape, or take a, uh, take a ranger band, put around that seal just to keep, uh, keep water out of it. But now, you know, you can take one of these, Take a ferro rod and there, there's your fire kit. What's, <laughs> so, it, what's the normal use for it? I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. What's you never use brasso? No, no, oh man. Brass. You have, you've had a shelter life. It makes metal shiny. <laughs> you just like rub it on the, the brass? And yeah, it, you, brass. you rub it on brass, <laughs> copper, any any type of metal and it polishes up metal. It's primary it purpose, the, purpose of the military is to make your fingers roll. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's to make you hate life. That's really what it is. Cool. <laughs> make you fit. Push up, sit ups, oh, fingerprints. Yep. So, Brasso, you know, once again, something you can go to Walmart and get. This is that stuff that either you have it at your home or it's extremely cheap, uh, extremely inexpensive to make and you can carry it with you into the, into the woods. So now you have your natural tenders, you have your more at-home remedies, if you will, and then now you're moving into your more commercial style tenders. Now, you might be like, whoa, I can just go get a can of Brasso and call, call, uh, call it a day. Yes, that is the case. But the best, the plus side to most a lot of commercial tenders is they're small and they're compact. They're easy to carry. Chris, question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. So I'm assuming since that's in a can, you couldn't take that out and put it in a baggie to be able to to make it smaller in a, in a pack or something, right? Okay, so you, you want to know if you can take it out and put it in a regular Ziploc yeah, bag? I'm assuming it would eat through a baggie if it had been in a can. Um, I won't know. I never tried it, but I was I would assume you could, if, especially if dry out. I'm sure you could get a smaller can too, or yeah. bottle or something. My large bag. Yeah, or even you know a, a small can like this. You can find these on Amazon. Yeah. That way, you, you, if you yeah, want to have bottles, be, stuff like that. yeah, something to be a little bit more compact, you can do it that way. Find somebody that dips. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. And 
now. It smells like wintergreen. <laughs> <laughs> so moving into your commercial tenders. You have a ridiculous amount of commercial tenders out there on the market. Pick your, pick your flavor. Uh, you have everything from these Mini Infernals by uh, Pathfinder. These are uh, Sure Strips by Go Prepare Survival. Standard Tender Quicks, I'm sure everybody's seen these before. These are the same things that we put in our Nano Spark, and also one of those will fit perfectly inside of our fire rod. And most of the, uh, most of the commercial tenders you'll find out there are waterproof, so that's a plus side. Um, fat rope sticks, these things, they look like, they look like this. But when you actually process them down, you, pro you can process them down to this nice, fine, fibrous material. And once again, it's easy, it's easy to take a spark, but if you ever watched any production Hangar 51 stuff, you can light that when it's sitting in water. So once again, a plus side to a commercial style tinder. If it's just sitting in water, it'll still, it'll still light and ignite. Just like any other tinder, you know, process it a little bit, make sure you have enough surface area there. There it is. And now burn for a long time. The other one, the other things they have, uh, the production Hangar 51 has is the, um, uh, it's like a wax wood stick. So it's just a piece of wood that they impregnated with um, some type of wax or they have a, their own wax, they don't tell anybody what it is. But it kind of works like um, fat wood on steroids pretty much. And you can process the same way you would process fat wood by either shaving it down. Or by sitting there and using a spoke shave. And once again, it ignites fairly easily by a spark. Come on, there it is. There it is. So, it's just another method. This is, once again, these are completely waterproof. Toss in, toss in the river, pick it up, scrape it off, and you're good to go. What a lot of people don't know is fat wood is actually uh, is actually extremely waterproof as well. Put my table out. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Burn all night. <laughs> well, that's what we want, right? It's been freezing. <laughs> um, other stuff you have out there on the market, you have um, you um, Yuko Sweet Fire Fire Stars. They're like a um, they're biomatter, I believe. Or biofuel and it burns for several minutes. So these these are nice. I haven't I haven't done too much with them, but once again, if you break it up or shave it down, it will take a spark from a ferro rod. And then, if you want to go extremely inexpensive, you can get something like these. How many people have seen these at Walmart in the? They're little zip fire starters. Once again, they're waterproof. They take a spark. All you gotta do is break them open. You know, break them open, get some surface area going, and they're burned for several minutes. So there's a lot of different types of tenders out there for you to for you to choose from. Whether it's a natural tender, whether it's something you bring from the home, or it's something you purchase. It's just pick your poison, find what works best for you. Now moving into uh, more in lines of fire lays. So what's the basic fire lay everybody knows of? TP, right? Everybody knows the TP fire lay. They work great for cooking. They work great for warmth. Um, they're relatively easy to build. Now, when it comes to a TP fire lay, does it need to look like an actual TP? No. If I were to sit there and take this, which I would have a lot more of this, just, there you go. Just drop it, drop it down. There you go. Toss your tin, you know, once again, have a lot more than that. Take your small pickup sticks, 
drop them down and then take your fuel, place it on the outside. Take your tender, where it's your tender bundle, where it's your commercial tender, where it's this type of tender. Take it in there, stuff it in there. Fire loves chaos. So the heat's go rise up through all that. It's gonna catch everything on fire and you're gonna be good to go. Uh, a lot of people, when, they, when it comes to making a fire, they try to make it look too pretty. It doesn't have to be pretty. Just make it where it can get oxygen and the fire has a way to travel up. That's all you need to do. So basic teepee fire. After that, you have your, um, like your more Dakota hole fire. Dakota hole fire would be something that uh, the military has used for escape and evasion, right? You dig a hole into the ground, you dig a hole into the ground, you dig another hole and you connect them. You have the hole, one hole that's facing the uh, windward side so the air will blow into it and uh, rise up through it. It's small, it's, uh, it's, easy to, it's easier to conceal, but also it puts off a lot of heat. So it's a great cooking fire. After that, you have your, um, your, log fi your long fires or your uh, log cabin fires, something you can use for all night fires. Uh, they burn hot, they burn for a very long time. And it's just, once again, when it comes to making a fire, don't go too far into how it should look. Freaking ladybugs. Don't go too far and make it look pretty. Just make it where you have enough material there and you have enough airflow and it's go, it's go ignite. Um, after that, move into, say, uh, one-handed fire starting with a ferro rod. How many people have done one-handed fire starting with a ferro rod before? All right, so a handful of people. It is actually very simple. It's relatively easy, too. So I'm just going to use these. What you would do is you will take, say it's a stick or a log or something like that laying, something like that laying on the ground. Take your knife out. Hopefully it has a 90 degree spine on it. Place it on the ground. Place your tender underneath that. Step on your knife. Come down, find that edge. Badass. Huh. I just learned something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, that's one way to do it. A couple, uh, couple other ways. I can sit there. One is one. I can put it <laughs> like that, and then. Like down like that, or if I have a stump, I can sit there, drive my knife into the stump, so like, so like learning how to use your firearm one handed, it's a good skill to learn, right? Learning how to apply a tourniquet one-handed. It's a good skill to learn, right? Learn how to start a fire one-handed. It's a good skill to learn. And it's relatively simple to do as long as you have the right tools to do it with. Now, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, gripes, moans, complaints about starting a fire? I've got one question about the, uh, the uh, store-bought tender, whatever you call it there. Yeah. I've seen online, like, I think it was magnesium or something like that. It looks like metal shavings almost. Okay. Uh, do you know, I mean, are those useful or is that just... So, so the question is, what about the magnesium uh, fire starting strips? Well, with it, they're, they've been used, the, especially the mag bars, like the dome mag, uh, mag bars, they've been used in military survival kits for decades now. Is it a good, easy to use fire starter? Yeah, it's not that bad. Does it have a learning curve to it? Yes, because when you're scraping off that magnesium, you need to scrape off a good like quarter size piece of magnesium, but also you need to make sure that it's actually in a pile and you have it going onto a tender source. Because once you ignite it, it's going to burn fast, it's going to burn hot. So, so it's, more of a flash, then. it's more of a flash burn than anything else. So a trick to that is if you have duct tape, take some duct tape, put it down, scrape off into that duct tape. So that way you have the magnesium catching and then also your duct tape catching and it's gonna burn a lot longer, a lot hotter. Answer your question? Yes, sir. Real quick, magnesium, or what we, what we used to call wheels on cars, mags. 
because they were made out of magnesium. The first ones were made out of magnesium, and they and they but they quit using that because when the car caught on fire. Kept <laughs> 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 going. Can't put out a, can't put out a magnesium fire either. Yeah, you wouldn't have water. Anymore. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, I read an article not too long ago. It was they used a, a, a an empty water bottle to start a fire with. Uh, uh, it's like a magnifying glass. Okay, so I don't know if you've ever tried doing that, I've never my personally. So tried. your your question was, uh, starting a fire with an empty water bottle and like that. Uh, you can start a fire with say a water bottle or a condom or anything like that. It needs to be clear. It needs to have water in it because then the, the suns go go through the water and uh, make your you know make your magnification. It can be done. I've seen people do it, so it can be done. But once again, is it one of those things that you want to do? No, because you should have fire starting me methods on you at all times. I saw on YouTube where like uh, um, potato chips. Oh yeah. Like Doritos, right? Yeah. Doritos yeah. and Fritos. They burn like it's cool. <laughs> so uh, it's most like all it's most like all the bad things that are in them. <laughs> so any, any, any of the fire guys in here will, will tell you they used to use that's what they used to use to burn cars and stuff. So it didn't look like a arson. They'd light a bag of potato chips in a car and. And so, so they get away from the insurance scams and stuff like that. So, what are the questions? Also, you want another, no, no, another cool thing of burns. It's uh, learned this from uh, my days when I used to blow things up. Um, <laughs> cocoa powder and sugar burn. Cocoa powder and sugar burn. Also, um, uh, rubber dust will burn as well. Or you see how people use ranger bands. Uh, ranger bands will actually, if you get them, if you get them lit, you can light them with a lighter or a match. They'll burn for an extremely long period of time. So it's just you know being a pyromaniac and finding what burns and what doesn't burn. Imitation coffee creamer does too. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> what would you have? Uh, how do you process the duct tape to get it to catch a spark from a All right. The question was, how do you process duct tape to get it? This is for a video too, so I'm trying to make sure the the audience on on YouTube or whoever hears. So the question was, how do you actually use the the tape to to set a fire to it? So what you would do, and it takes a little bit of time, just get your strip of duct tape out. And you're going to start pulling little strips off that bigger strip. So think strings. Oh, yep. Okay. And you just oh, go. You process it just like your regular tender. Pretty much. Remember, tender, tender needs to be processed. Whether it's store-bought tender or uh, we were homemade. Talk, we were talking back there. We thought you could just use the tape to... <laughs> I mean, if you, if you have a lighter, it would actually work very well. So, what else, guys? So it's just doing this, and you're making a little. Okay, you got that. Whoa, 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 whoa. The uh, the lighters and the fire starters you showed us in the beginning that your company manufactures. What retailers can we find? Are they like at Bass Pro and things like that? Do you guys sell those through RSR? Um, no, we don't sell through RSR. We sell through uh, Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge knives. But you also will be able to find them. Um, through um, REI, Bass Pro, okay. uh, uh, they're in my Amazon store too. Yeah, oh. you find them. You find them on Amazon. You find them through a lot of dealers. So all you guys really do is just type it in Google and you'll Questions. find it. Questions? Yep. What is your tender of choice? Like, what's your automatic? The question is, what is his favorite tender? What is my favorite tender of choice? Um, Down the gas and a stick of dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> it all varies on what I plan on doing. So if it's something I'm carrying with me on a daily basis, like in my wallet right now, I have some of these Sure strips and some of the fat rope uh, strips from you know from a couple of different companies. Do you bring zipper pulls? Uh, I got one on my keychain. If it's something that I'm carrying also on my body, I would have on my keychain. I got one of our tender zips, which is pretty much a zipper pull has a quarter tender in it. I also got one on my jacket right now as well. You should call those fire fuses. Actually, I kind of like that. <laughs> I like that one. I'll, I'll coin it if we come up with something but, new. But like those, that. but you can buy those zipper pulls and put them on your jacket and stuff like that. And it's not just like a regular one; like it's like it's like super flammable. And you and you, so you, it doesn't look like it, but you got tinder all over your jacket. Now, if it's something, so that's something. If I'm carrying something, if I'm carrying a fire starter or tinder as an everyday carry item, I'll carry something in my wallet or I'll carry something on my jacket or something like that if i'm carrying as an actual fire kit i would usually go with maybe like the the mini infernos and then some fatwood gotcha. okay so exotech.com yes 
You can find all our products at www.exotac.com. You don't have to use the W's, does he? <laughs> He's just trolling you. He knows. It's, it's how you. It's how. It's how it works. <laughs> also, actually, actually, no. You can just type in exotac.com. I know. I know. But everybody might not know. Trust that. me, they know. <laughs> <laughs> but also, because you guys are here and we love you guys so much, we're also going to offer you. I believe it's a twenty percent discount for the people here. One time oh. discount. If it's not for the internet, we'll wait till I turn the camera off. Okay, okay. So, exotech.com, uh, my Amazon store. You can see them at SHOT Show, right? Go yes, we'll be at SHOT Show again this and, year. And uh, Chris Jensen from Exotech, good dude. Hope you guys learned something. Thank you. Yeah. Woo!